Hey, Will. Welcome to the show. Hey, thanks. Excited to be here. Very nice to have you here as well. So uh, for the folks who aren't familiar with you or your business, let's start there. Who are you and what do you do in the world? So uh, Will Christensen, um, I am an automation expert and I run an automation consultancy. So we automate and integrate. Mm, two of my favorite words. Love that. Love the idea of automating. So let's start off with uh, something that I hope that will really capture the interest of the audience. Tell me about an amazing result that you have achieved for a client. I think it's something like in the order of 16 hours worth of work, all scaled back to just two hours worth of work. And then we're going to unpack how you did that so that the people who are listening can obviously be able to implement that golden nugget in their business if they are so inclined. Yep, absolutely. So uh, that actually leads right into where this all began. Um, the, the 16 hours a week process that uh, you're referencing specifically is actually um, something that I did at the very beginning of my career. Um, I was given the beautiful opportunity as the lowest man on the totem pole at an advertising agency to do 16 hours of copying and pasting inside Excel every single week. It was a, it was a, it was a, it was a, a chore, uh, a pleasure. Um, and my wife will tell you that I am not a very, um, patient person when it comes to things that are repetitive and monotonous. Mm -hmm. Um, to such a degree that I will do just about anything to avoid having to do the same thing over and over again. Mm -hmm. um, and so I took that passion for my wife would call it laziness and I would call it efficiency, a passion for efficiency, not laziness. Um, and I started to dig into how could you, what, what could you do here? And, and, and I remember sitting down at the desk with my immediate superior, and this is like eight years ago. And he, he goes, this is called a V lookup. And I was like, oh, V what? What is that? He's like, this is called a V lookup. Let me, let me show you this. And he showed me how to take two different data sets that like, so let's say transactions mm -hmm. and um, customer contact records. Mm -hmm. And he showed me how to create a column so that I could pull in like the invoice number and show it next to those customer records without having to go into each one manually. So if, if you've had this problem before, you're looking at two spreadsheets, I got data about customers and I got transactions. You want to use a VLOOKUP and a sum if. Those are the two formulas you're going to play with to create helper columns and kind of manage some of this. So he showed me how to do that and it blew my mind. Mm -hmm. I was like, are you, what? You can, you can make these two Huh? Cause I had, I had been copying and pasting for 16 hours. <laughs> so this, that cut, that cut off like an hour every week. And I was like, okay, if I could cut off an hour, what else could I do? I proceeded to spend probably 10 hours of my week automating and chunking off a piece of that manual process every week for the next six months. Mm -hmm. And, and I teach myself a little bit more and I, and I, I record these macros. So here's another nugget for you. Um, if you're doing anything in Excel or Google sheets, I challenge you at this moment to stop doing whatever you're doing and go spend 30 minutes watching a couple of tutorial YouTube videos on macros mm -hmm. and surprise Google sheets has macros now. So if you were thinking, Oh, I'm not using Google sheets because it doesn't have macros. Google knows that they're going to eat Excel's Excel's lunch. And, and they came out with that. Mm -hmm. So you can now record all of those actions and replay them. So I figured out how to create all of these recordings. And then I would run into these situations where like, think of like the little man running along the cliff, he'd get to the end and there was no, ah, he'd fall down. And then I'd have to pick him back up and put him on and he'd run again. Well, I was like, well, what if I built a bridge between these two macros and made it so they didn't stop? So the little, the little man running on the track didn't fall down. And so I started looking at the code and I connected the two different pieces of code. And this is where a lot of people are going to fall off and say, well, I don't code. I would be willing to bet that if you spend just a little bit of time looking at it, you would be surprised at how much you can understand. I went a little further than that. Remember my passion for efficiency, not laziness, pushed me over the edge to the point where I taught myself to code, connect all of those dots, taught myself to go in and take 
that like I, I actually had Excel go in and open up a web browser and it would go download my report and then it would copy and paste it and put it into that next place. So here's the, here's the other nugget. When in doubt, Google it. If you're wondering like, I wonder if I could automate this process. My habit at that point, and I've drilled this into myself, is to open up a web browser and type in exactly what was in my head can you automate and I insert whatever was in my head and I literally type it just like I would ask the question to you, Trent, can I automate this? Well, I do all the time. Oh yeah. Well, and, and so to hear now, for those of you who are listening to this, you know how successful Trent is. Trent and I did not talk beforehand, but we both have the same ingrained process. Can I automate X, Y, or Z? What you're telling the world is this is what I'm looking for. And there are entrepreneurs out there begging you to ask that question. And if you've landed on the right process, they will have built a piece of software that is begging you to ask that question. I can't tell you the number of times when I've been like, is there a way to take a screenshot, a live screenshot or something? I mean, I can, the, 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 it's, it's endless in terms of what's there. I've been shocked at what, what, that, what, what comes back. And to be clear, my beloved audience, this is not going to be a podcast about teaching you how to write little lines of code. The podcast is going to be focused on helping you to identify areas of your business that without writing little lines of code, you can automate because these days, unlike eight years ago, there's some pretty spectacular tools that make creating these automations pretty darn easy to do. So um, with that said, Will, how should someone determine if they should automate something or delegate it or eliminate it? Because, you know, so many entrepreneurs are bogged down in work, chopping down trees, working in their business, digging ditches, chopping down trees, both metaphors I like to use, but they're stuck in their business because they got to get all this stuff done. They got clients to stuff to fulfill and so forth. How do they figure out whether they can automate something? So I've actually developed a litmus test that allows you to decide whether or not a process should or should not be automated. Okay. So the first thing you're going to do when you take on and decide whether or not you got to, you got to decide whether there's return on that investment. What I tell people is look for processes that are more than 15 minutes a day, more than an hour a week, or more than an hour a month. And what I've discovered is that if the process is taking, and this is company-wide, so if you have one VA who's spending two minutes a day doing that, well, maybe not worth doing. But if you have 10 VAs and they're all doing the same thing and it's all taking two minutes, maybe time to be start, start looking into that. So if it doesn't pass that litmus test, stop. Don't, don't dig into that. Don't look into that. So remember how Trent and I both go into Google and we search for that. One of the built in litmus tests that I did for myself is I said, wait, stop. Is this going to happen in perpetuity? Is the thing that I'm going to automate going to be happening for this foreseeable future? And there are several times when I've done this when the answer is no. And if the answer is no, why are you wasting your time trying to automate something that's only going to happen once? Okay. So look for something in perpetuity, which is why I say more than 15 minutes a day, more than an hour a week or more than an hour a month. And you can do the math there. And obviously more than 15 minutes a day is way more than an hour a month. But I find that thinking about it in terms of daily, monthly, or weekly forces you to really understand some of that value, that ROI. Okay. The second litmus test that I tell people is, could this be done by someone with reasonable understanding of Excel or Google Sheets or email? Could this be done by someone like that? Or could this be taught to someone like that in the same amount of time that it took to do it? If the answer to that question is yes, I can, I can teach someone to do this as quickly as it takes to actually do it because most of it is common sense and it's just procedural, something that should be mapped out in Flowster, right? Mm -hmm. If it's procedural that way, um, it's probably time to consider the idea of automation. So if you've developed an SOP, you have somebody doing that, there's an, there's an opportunity to start looking at that. And that, that's where I start to find the nuggets. So you make a big long list of those things and then you start Googling. 
and you start hunting down where that is. I like to, I like to tell people, get out that sticky note, put it on your desk, write down the things that pass those three time limits, and then put a tick mark next to them every time they happen. And once you get to the end of the week, you'll know where you should start automating. So let me give folks a couple of real world examples of things that I've automated in my business, just to kind of give context. So I have people come to book an appointment with me to talk about growing their business. So they go to my Calendly app and of course they book an appointment. Now, if I didn't have automation, whenever that appointment was booked, in my case, I'd have to go create a workflow in Flowster for the manual processes that I need to make sure I don't forget to do. I'd then have to create a record in my active campaign account. I'd have to create a record in my pipe drive account. I'd have to create a deal in my pipe drive account. I'd have to put the deal in the right stage with the right value with the right close date. And I'd also have to somehow put a notification into Slack to tell me I got a new lead. Now, I don't wanna do any of that manually. So I have automated that entire process from the moment someone books with me in my Calendly, all everything that I just described happens just like that. Thanks to one of my favorite apps in the whole wide world, which is why people don't know how to, they don't know how to have to code. If you can figure out how to use Zapier and you'd be amazed, but you are able to automate the, the, the ability to integrate one app with another app and have the trigger event happen and have an outcome happen or an action step happen is absolutely phenomenal. Zapier is one of my favorite tools in the entire world. Yep. Um, I, I have all sorts of crazy things happening inside Zapier. Uh, things for my personal life. I have automation that happens. So, so you talk about Calendly. Let, let's talk about Calendly for just a second. So, um, you know, for those of you watching this, we're recording this um, on on April first, twenty twenty. And if if anybody remembers back to April first, twenty twenty, when you're watching this, you'll realize that was right in the middle of this COVID nineteen craziness, right? Mm -hmm. And um, my grandmother is an extreme extrovert. We live in their basement. We're, we're there to help them out, prolong the 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 time that they can spend in their home. Okay, so don't need to be there where they're helping them. And she's an extreme introvert. She's secluded to the house she can't i mean really can't go out and and, and she's 92 so she shouldn't be going out mm -hmm. right on sunday this week i created a calendly link for her and i created a facebook event for all of her grandkids to go create virtual meetings with her in zoom did it totally for free and then i automated the process of pushing the email that comes in that says there's a new calendar event to ding her cell phone with a, with a text message. Nice. So, so I mean, it, it, and, and here's the funny part. I thought nobody's actually going to do this. She's already had five appointments. It's only, it's only been like three days. Yeah. She's already had five video calls and the stress level in our household has decreased dramatically because those grandparents are recognizing that their grandkids care about them and it's all about there. So automation doesn't have to just be about business, right? Mm -hmm. You can automate some things that can make real impact in people's lives. And she's a much happier human being right now. Yeah, I'll bet. Can you give me another example of uh, an automation that you have in your business? Yep, absolutely. So um, if you were to go to my website and this will, this will evolve over time, but currently if you go to my website, there are two different forms that you can contact me through. There's the sticky footer. So if you scroll down, it's, it's through active campaign. There's a sticky footer that pops up on the bottom of the website. It says, Hey, do you want a free consultation? And you put in your name and your email address. If you were to fill that out, you'll get an email from me within five minutes. It looks like I have lightning speed. In fact, one of my clients was like, you should probably put a delay in there because there's no way you wrote that email that fast. Like it, it kind of like pulls back the curtain on the fact that it's an automation. This automation um, allows us to automatically send you an email and it says something along the lines of, hey, so-and-so, and it puts in your first name, even though you may not have even put in your first name because Zapier has this really cool feature where you can do lead scoring. So I take your business email address and poof, I have your name, 
the size of your company, all sorts of other things. That's included in every Zapier account. That's a, a feature that a lot of people don't even know. Zapier I, score. I didn't know about that one. I'm Boom! That one Trent didn't know about that one. So Zapier score is what it's called. It's included in every single Zapier account. And I can put Trent's email address in there and it'll tell me his social security. No, actually, just kidding. It won't, it won't tell me the social security number, but it will tell me. It actually does tell me like how large the company is, whether or not you're a Google shop. It'll tell me all sorts of data about you as a company. Mm -hmm. And um, it allows, it gets the domain name. I don't know if you've ever done one of those zaps where you're like trying to pick apart the domain name of, a, of, a, of somebody. You don't have that, you don't have that problem anymore because if you feed in the email address, it'll spit back the domain and, and it's all nice and pretty. Well, what we do is we pass it through that lead score tool and then we automatically respond to you and we say, hey, thank you so much for reaching out to us. We'd really appreciate it if you would fill in this form, which I have painstakingly taken the time to pre-fill for you so that you don't have to give me any of the information you already gave me. Yeah. And you click the link, it pre-fills the form, you fill it out and you tell me, so my favorite part about it, this is my favorite part, they go down the form. If they say that they're a high value lead, guess whose calendar they get access to? Yours. Mine. If they say, you know, and they're one of the smaller guys who I still want to help, but I really don't have time to be jumping on the phone every single time with those individuals. Guess whose calendar it goes to? My assistant. Mm -hmm. So I've pre-filtered the people. So and guess 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 what the guess how good the quality of the appointments that started flowing into my calendly became? Much much better. Much much better. And and my favorite part about it? Did I use a paid plugin? No, I used Google Forms. And the contact form that was just built into that, it built into the WordPress website that I use. I'm going to upgrade it because I just got off the phone with Gravity Forms, which is we, we rebuilt Gravity Forms Zapier integration. We're going to do a webinar with them and we're going to rebuild it so that when it gets to the end, it like dynamically redirects and does some other cool stuff. But mm -hmm. I mean, fascinating in terms of like, you know, if you, there are case studies out there. If you respond to a lead within five minutes, they're like 95.95% more likely to respond to you or to take action on what you just said. So what if you could hire a robot that would do that while you sleep? Wouldn't that be amazing? Mm -hmm. That's essentially what we did is, oh, is we, like we, we, we've done that. So, and that's, that's true of both. If you fill out the contact form and you say, Hey, I really want to automate something. When you fill out that form, it pre-fills the section that says, what do you want to automate with what you sent to me in my contact form? I'm, I'm filling out your footer bar right now because I want do to do it. This. Do it. Try it out. Yeah. No. And, and it works. I, it, it honestly, it happens on that, that schedule. Zapier has the one minute or the 15 minute plans. Mm -hmm. I think I'm on the five minute plan. And so it's it, it, depending on like when the ticker goes off, cause Zapier doesn't have it all on the actual one, five, 10 mark of, mm -hmm. of the hour. So depending on when you fill it out, sometimes it comes back within like 30 seconds and there's no, it's, it's humanly not possible to have written the email that fast, but I wrote it in such a way that I wanted people to feel like I had spent time looking at it and doing what was there, not mm -hmm. to deceive them, but to show them I am going to treat your business in a personal way, but I'm going to do it in an automated way. So and that, and that that's an example. That green footer bar, that's just native to active campaign. That's not an extra plugin. Hey, do I, not, I get another gold star right there. Gold star. Yes, that is native to Active Campaign. Oh, okay. I did not know that. I'm relatively new to Active Campaign myself. Active Campaign's so I... pretty cool. It's it's a powerful, powerful tool. It's almost more juice than I need right now, I'll be honest. Okay. Um, we use Active Campaign and I use Streak alongside it actually. Um, because I Streak's been a little bit more um in what's there. And and, and that I, I forgot to mention, when I send out that lead, it actually does create a, a deal or a box as Streak calls it inside my my streak account and it tracks all of that stuff and gets everything rolling. So yeah. very cool. So I got That's your email. Up. It's taken me to the Google form. So I've done this using jot form and there's conditional logic. And so in my jot form, the first question is tell me where your business is at. And there's three options and two of the options are, I have a business or I had one and sold it. Those options will both ultimately see my calendar. And then the third option is I'm brand new and they'll never see my calendar because yep. I realized that it, those folks don't buy 
what I have to sell because they're brand new. They don't have the budget. They can't make the decision. They're not ready. It's not a good fit. I, and I well, figured out that if I'm going to do any one-on-one -on -one consulting, I really like working with existing business owners, but I don't really like working with folks on a one-on-one -on -one basis that are brand new. Yep. Uh, it's just not a good fit. So you're probably doing the same thing here with your, uh, with your Google document survey. Yep. Because you've got the, who are you? I'm a Zapier user. So depending upon what radio button I choose, you've got yep. conditional logic in the back. Yep. That is going to route you to whoever's calendar needs to be routed to. Correct. So if you choose there, I am a Zapier SaaS, like I'm, I'm an owner of a, of a SaaS company. I run a SaaS company that hits my calendar every time. Yeah. If you choose that I'm a Zapier user, you get down a step further and there's one that asks this really interesting question. It asks, how much time is this taking you? And if they say uh, above a certain amount, I want to talk to them because I know that there's more ROI in, in what can be automated. Mm -hmm. If they say below a certain amount, it goes to my assistant, she vets it for me ahead of time and then she jumps on the phone and, and says hello and then hands them to me. If they, if they're the right person to talk to. So that, that right there helped a ton, um, with our ability to process and work with people in a, in an automated way, but they didn't feel grumpy about it because they got access to my calendar and could do everything that was there. Yeah. I love it. Absolutely love it. All right. Where are we here? Question. So we've just run through a few examples. Um, why do you think, people aren't automating basic stuff like this. I mean, I'm going to guess because they don't know they can. Well, so I've actually done a bunch of research into that. I talked to, I mean, you, you got to think about it. Every single day I talk to three to five people who were looking to automate something. And over the past three and a half years, so you know, if you were to add that up, I should really do some statistics on what is that three to five years uh, in terms of business days worth of people. Um, I've asked that question a lot. And the thing that I've discovered, um, the thing that the reason people aren't automating is because they tried and failed and they didn't want to go back. Mm -hmm. So they spent some time looking into Google because everybody's like, Oh, Google can solve everything. That's uh, Google's magic, right, man? Like the, mm -hmm. the, the idea that they came up with like, Hey, all you got to do is put it in this magic white bar and we will give you back what you want. Like, it's like a genie, right? Like mm -hmm. I want a million dollars. And sure enough, there's 20 people telling you how to buy, how to, how to make a million dollars. Right. Well, um, I found that Google can also be a bait and switch and that's not Google's fault. That's just because somebody figured out how to put something at the top of the page that wasn't the most effective thing for you to find. So I find that most people are not automating because they spent an entire afternoon digging down a rabbit hole and either they successfully automated and the thing that they automated, they only had to do once. Yeah. And they're like, well, screw this. I spent an entire afternoon and I'm never going to do that again. Why would I ever? And they forget that they're looking for something repeatable or they went down that rabbit hole and spent an entire afternoon trying and like almost being able to automate it. And they it gave up. Didn't work. Yeah. It didn't work. Some, something about, I mean, you and I both though, we were talking about it earlier. Zapier has some gotchas. There's some things, triggers and searches and some of those other things. That's why they have a Zapier certified expert program that we're part of where we help people with that. But um, yeah, most of the time it's because they've tried and failed and they're just like, it is just not worth my time to investigate or automate. Yeah. I know. I, there are times even myself when I get frustrated you know, I'm, I'll be having in the zaps that I was showing you before we hit the record button that I use in my own business. There was one of them, dude, I must have monkeyed with this thing for three hours trying to get one simple little thing to work. And it was driving me absolutely bonkers. Trans, next time, shoot me it. I didn't know so, you. Oh, uh, well, now if you get stuck there, when you're, when you're in the middle of it, um, what I tell people is, I actually set a limit for myself and my threshold is much higher than, than others, but my limit is about an hour. Um, depending on the, the demand on my time right now, my limits like five minutes. If, if I, if I get stuck on something for five minutes like that, there's somebody on my team who can probably, who has more time and can figure it out more. I record a loom video or a screencast by video or something like that. And I say, this is where I am. This is where I'm banging my head out. And I send it to one of two people. 
straight to Zapier's support team, who is amazing if you'll give them the details that they need. They actually you, give support? I wasn't aware that Zapier gave any support. Oh, yeah. It, it, they, they will give support. So they have the Zapier Experts browser where you can get live support from someone like me. And obviously, you know, I'll jump on for 15 minutes to 30 minutes with you for free just to help you see where it is and hopefully gain your business. Um, Zapier will go the other direction and do it via email. And if you give them a Loom video that describes exactly what you're seeing, those guys go above and beyond to, to fix what's there. Mm -hmm. So I, I set myself that five minute limit. I record that video and I actually have a, I have an automation where if I title the name of the screencastify video, bug dash Zapier dash title of bug, it actually automatically sends Zapier a bug video for me. And, or it automatically sends uh, Skubana, which is another platform that I use a lot, a, a video. And I created a list of like eight different people that I, I, I'm commonly am finding bugs. And I, I put it, I put that in there. I also made it so that I could do a couple of abbreviations to send videos automatically to my assistant to find different things. So now instead of being like copy, paste, describe yeah. video, all of that stuff, I don't do that anymore at all. I literally just titled my video, poof, ends up right and where you, it should yeah, go. You and I, we got to nerd out some more. <laughs> yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. I so want to see inside your Zapier account. <laughs> it's a little insane sometimes. I mean, I've even... My wife makes fun of me, but she made fun of me at the beginning, but now she uses it. If yeah. you come to my house and you say Alexa, and I can use that keyword because I use a different keyword, but if you say Alexa, trigger Alex home, okay, Alex is my daughter, trigger Alex home, it actually will hit IFTT, which is another yeah, automation no program. It'll hit IFTT, which will, because that's where Alexa gets, gets their, their little juice, that will fire a post request. And so for those of you who are like, post what? That's just a fancy way of saying a message on the internet that goes to another service I have on my phone called Automate, which sends a text message out to the, the family that is often playing with Alex. It's a message that says, hey, do you mind sending our daughter home? And so you, and, and, and so my wife was making fun of me. She's like, really, you made that? She uses it almost every day. Now, not right now because COVID-19 and all that yeah, jazz. Yeah. But, but when, when my daughter's over there, because that's the friend's house that she's most often at, she uses that thing all the time. As opposed so, to just picking up her phone and saying, hey, I'm home. Well, <laughs> well she, she's, so, so she says, trigger Alex home. And then it shoots a text message that says, hey, would you mind sending Alex home for dinner? Is what yeah, I know, but you could pick up your phone and hit there and do a voice record saying, hey, would you mind? But I get it. I get it. So, so here's, here's the funny part, though. It's about the effort that it took. Yep. That's three words. Yeah. No, it's, four, it's because I have to give the keyword. So four. And guess what? My phone is still in my pocket. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right? No, I like it. I, I have Alexa. I have Echo Dots all over my house. I love Alexa. I don't think I'm using it anywhere near its we, potential. Trent, we should, we should geek out over what you can connect. Like I've got all sorts of crazy stuff that I've connected yeah, Alexa, we're do that. Alexa to. We, yeah. uh, <laughs> we, maybe we'll do it at the end of this. Cause I'm sure there's some people who are, <laughs> well, yeah. Hang around to the end. We'll, uh, Will and I are going to do some uh, Alexa nerding out at the end of this episode. So in an organization, Will, um, what advice would you give to a business owner who wants to establish a culture around Let's always be looking for automations. Let's constantly be looking for ways that we can improve the efficiency of our company. The first thing I would do is establish a grant or scholarship program inside your company uh, that is for automations. And I would give the, the, the employee who comes up with the idea a chunk of that change. So if you're not rewarding, so if your employee comes up, this is one of my biggest pet peeves. If your employee comes up with this like drastically amazing idea, real innovation, they do an intrapreneur move. They're yeah. inside your company, but they, they figure out a way to re-engineer something or change it. Sometimes us, other entrepreneurs, the boss are pigheaded enough to think that we own that innovation or that we somehow made that possible. Yeah. If you, you have got to pull your head out of wherever it is and recognize that that individual just provided a ton of value for your business. Ask me if when I took that 16 hours of work and I turned it into two because I thought it was annoying, ask me if I got 
any piece of that savings. No, my employer was like, hey, would you just, you know, let, let's just keep working. Thank you for, for bringing that efficiency to the table. Did that motivate me to go find more automation? No. Not for them, but it mo I was internally motivated to find automation. But for another employee who brings that sort of savings to the table for your business, calculate it out and give them a year's worth, man. Like give them 10% of what they just saved you over the course yeah. of a year. And, and if you do that, these guys are going to double down and they're going to find every freaking way they can possibly do to automate your business. You want to know like who that. you want to know who can actually make a difference in your business as far as automation. It's the peons at the bottom of the pyramid, the dudes who's who's on whose back you ride right now. Those guys are the ones who can find processes. Mm -hmm. So when I go in and I do what I call an automation audit, I get, I sell the CEO, 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 CEO. Hey, let me go in and transform your company. Guess who I start interviewing? All the Very way. Long, the Cause bottom. they're the ones that are doing all the processes that the executives never do. They have no, they're, it's just so far off their radar screen mm -hmm. that nobody's looking for efficiency in there. And unless you train, change how they think about doing their work instead of just following the established procedure if instead you had sent them with a scholarship program to say let's make your job better let's make you more efficient it's just never going to happen yep so so allowing that individual because because in their in the ceo's mind he's got something in his head that says i'm better than that individual or or maybe i'm not better but they're so inexpensive there's nothing we could possibly do to make that better and, and yeah. the, the moment you can get your whole company to shift so that they start feeling like those, those individuals down at the bottom of the totem pole start to realize that you're willing to invest not only in them, but also their processes. I mean, you look at, at Amazon and some of these other companies, the, where they've gotten there, they've instilled that culture from the beginning. Mm -hmm. they, yeah. they, they allow anyone to pull the ladder, stop the production line and say, hey, why don't we go left instead of right, right here? Mm -hmm. And the CEO says, flip, why don't we? I had never considered it because they're standing on top of the ladder looking out over the top and they have no idea what's happening on the bottom floor. Mm -hmm. So if you want to instill a culture, incentivize your employees to bring automation to the day table and reward them for doing so. And if you reward them for doing so, they'll go back and chase it again and again and again. And obviously you've got to equip them. So zap your training, um, you know, training with a company like mine where you could, you, you could hire a company like mine to come in and do webinars on automation. You could go out and find some of that material yourself, put together, spend a half an hour finding a couple of videos on how to automate just on YouTube, right? So, so you want to find the fastest way to do this, go spend a half an hour, watch, watch some videos. You don't have to watch the whole thing. Just watch the first, you know, two to three minutes, make sure that it's a decent video. Send that out to your whole team and say, I will pay you to watch this video. You don't have to work. I want you to just sit and watch this video, educate your team on what's even possible. Mm -hmm. That's, that's your first step. All right. Before we go nerding out on uh, how to uh, turn Alexa into your slave, um, is that with respect to the business angle that we've been talking about so far, is there any other question you were interviewing yourself? Um, is there any other question that we think we need to add to this conversation so that we don't leave a stone unturned? This is going to sound like a selfish question because um, it, 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 it will directly tie to the bottom line of my business, but I'm not trying to tell you that you should hire me. I'm trying to tell you that you should hire someone to be an automation expert in your company, to be someone that you can pull that lever with. So the, the solution, the fastest solution I have found to those, those companies, those employees, those people who have tried to automate and failed is to give them someone they can call who knows the answer faster or better than Google. Yeah. Someone who can back them up for what's there. And so the, the question I would ask is, will if you were in charge of my company, what percentage of our total revenue would you devote to automation and efficiency? And that, that would be the question that, that, I, that I would ask myself if, if, I were, if I were taking that to the table. All right, cool. So time to nerd out on, uh, on Alexa. Obviously Alexa is a pretty popular thing. So I think a lot of people listening to this probably have at least one Alexa device at home. As I mentioned to you, I have them 
in the living room, in the kitchen, in the office, in the bedroom, they're, they're all over the place. Yeah, me too. And I have literally barely, I've got the lights that you can turn on and off by saying, Alexa, I, I have a Nest thermostat, which I don't even know if you can connect it to. Oh, us. yeah. What? <laughs> Trent! I haven't bothered. I haven't, it's not one of my priorities. I haven't bothered. Trent! <laughs> you can totally do that. <laughs> yeah, it's totally connectable. All right, so let's start off with some of your coolest Alexa home automations. Trent, okay, well, let's start with the thermostat. Honeywell makes one. We've got a Honeywell thermostat. My 96-year-old grandfather, who is legally blind, controls the thermostat in my house. Now, that was a mistake. Um, we should not have allowed him to set the thermostat because it's always too hot in there. But he's legally blind. So, so let's talk about, like, what, what did that just put in his fingertips? He can go in there, and it's not, it's not a Nest. It's a Honeywell that, that has a, a, an Alexa connection. And here's the funny part. It was connected for six months, maybe even a year, before I, we moved into the basement to, to help them out. He mm -hmm. didn't even know. Somebody had told him and he'd forgotten. And, and so every time he'd ask me, so, hey, what, what's the temperature in the house? I was like, why are you asking me? Just say, Alexa, what's the temperature in the house? And it's going to spit back and say, it's 72 degrees. And he can be like, make it colder. And it makes it colder. Make it warmer. It makes it warmer. Like, mm -hmm. amazing in terms of what – and then so, – so a lot of the things that, you know, he's, he'll, he'll ask, what's the temperature outside all the time? And we've got a dial up on the on the side of the screen, but he's legally blind. He can't see that. He's got he can see enough to walk around, but uh, he can't he can't see the dial from across the room, mm -hmm. and so he doesn't ask me anymore. And the crazy thing, he's smart enough to know the difference between the different devices. So I have two different Alexa networks in my house. I have a network for me for my family, and I put one in the kitchen in the front room, and then we've got the basement ones, and I've got one in out out in the office and one in the garage. So I, those are, those are my, oh, and I've got one in the bathroom too. So, so, so that's my network of Alexas. My grandfather is smart enough to know when to say Alexa and when to say echo. Oh, it didn't go off. It was, it, there's one sitting right here on my desk. Yeah. Um, so, so he's smart enough to know when to say that. Um, and, and, and it's just fascinating to see like, like him interact with that device. He'll use it to call me on my cell phone. Did you know that to make phone calls? Mm -mm. Oh yeah. Alexa totally makes phone calls. You can say Alexa call so-and-so. And if you've synced it up with your phone, it'll look in the contacts in your phone and make that phone call. If and they have just a talk through the Alexa, so you don't even have to pull your phone out of your pocket. Yeah. Yep. And you, I'm assuming you can send texts as well. Text messages. They had that turned on and they recently turned it off. I think, it, I think it became too expensive through Twilio or whatever they were yeah, using. Okay. But I bet you that comes back before too long. I send text messages, but I go around and about. So, so if do you use an Android or an iPhone? iPhone. Okay. So this is one of the reasons I don't like iPhones. They don't have as many of the cool apps. There's an app on Android called Automate. It's literally just called Automate. Mm -hmm. This app will do just about anything you can think of in terms of like making phone calls or, I mean, the, the app is incredible. I've got it set up where I can, I can actually go in and I can copy someone's name and, it, and, and then I can share that name to an automation on my, on my automate device and it'll go find that person's name inside my contacts and then I click OK and the next time a text message comes from that individual, it forwards the text message to my assistant. So like if it's the middle of the night and I'm like, oh, I'm going to bed right now, but I want to cancel that meeting, I will schedule a text message to go out in the morning so that it goes out like an hour before the meeting, but I'm sleeping and I want the text message of the canceled appointment to, of their reply to go to my assistant so that she can see that, that it got canceled and take mm -hmm. care of it and reschedule it. But I don't want to do that right now because it's the middle of the night. So like, there's just all but sorts of- did you of, do that through Alexa? Remember, we're talking about Alexa Oh, hacks. sorry. Okay, that was Automate. That was Automate. Um, so another Alexa hack, um, it's, it's another one where we're, we're sending text messages to a group of people. So I am, we were talking about uh, gaming earlier. I really enjoy Overwatch. It's a, it's, mm -hmm. a, it's a game that's out there on the PC. I played a lot with my brothers at night. Um, if I say trigger Overwatch, which connects to IFTTT, um, it will automatically text my brothers and one of my friends saying, hey, you want to play Overwatch? So instead of pulling out a group message and, and getting all of that out there, because if you've ever, have you, have you ever tried to say, hey, Siri, send a group message? Good luck. 
Siri doesn't do that yet. Okay, so so I've got my dirt biking buddies. So you're basically saying I could just go say, hey, Alexa, who wants to go dirt biking this weekend? And I could have that fig configured so that it would send a text to the group? Yeah, you would do that through IFTT. So um, if this then that has yeah. the ability for you to say, Alexa, trigger, insert your own keyword. And, and you would give it a special keyword and then you can trigger. So, so if you look at, like, let's talk about hacking Alexa. If mm -hmm. you look at the numberless possibilities of things that you can have happen inside your Alexa device, it's fascinating. Another thing that I do, do you guys use the grocery cart list for Alexa? My wife, who's an Android user, has an app on her phone that she really, really loves. I don't know what it is, but she's a huge fan of her grocery shopping list app. Okay, so here's, here's the cool part. I don't care what app it is. It's probably on IFTT. Most of those list making apps are. And mm -hmm. um, you can probably connect the grocery list app inside Alexa to push it into that one. And then you have access to put things on the grocery list. So that's probably what she like. Let's be honest, Trent. She doesn't like you putting things on the grocery list. That's why that's I never put saying. anything on the grocery list. I don't even go near the grocery <laughs> store. <laughs> so I could say, hey, Alexa, add blueberries to the grocery list or whatever it was. And then it would show up inside her app. Okay. Yeah. So like, like the grocery shopping thing. Oh, this was mind blowing. We were in the grocery store the other day. We're, we're like loading up on a couple of things because I got 92 and 96 year old grandparents and I don't want to get them sick because this thing's yeah. crazy for that age group. So we're at the grocery store and we're buying a bunch of cans and stuff to, you know, to, to try to eliminate the need to even be in the grocery store for more than 10 minutes for milk, right? Just yeah. trying to minimize our exposure. Um, I go into the... Alexa, it's, it's right in the same view of everything else. And I, I'm, you know, those three dots in the top right hand corner of every app that's like the menu. Mm -hmm. I'm addicted to those three dots, man. I click on those every time I see them just because I want to see if there's a new option for something in there. Yeah. I open it up and it goes, um, would you like to categorize your shopping list? And I was like, categorize, wait, no way. I hit categorize my shopping list it took my list of 50 items and it put them into dairy, bread, yeah. uh, uh, vegetables, sure. fruit. And I was like, of course Amazon did. I mean, they've got an API that'll categorize whether or not it's a bird, a picture of a bird or a dog. Of course they could categorize my yeah. list automatically. So then when you're walking through the grocery store, how many, raise your hand if you're, and I know that like most of the people who are listening to this podcast just raise their hand. Um, raise your hand if you have gone into the grocery store, you bought bread, and then you went back to get milk, and you said, oh, crap, I forgot buns. Oh, yeah, you end up <laughs> Which, zigzagging all over the place. Yeah, it categorized the freaking, I'm never going to use anything else again, man, because I can be like, Alexa, add milk to my shopping list. Alexa, add this to my shopping list. And then when it actually comes time to do it, categorize, boom. I walk down my aisle. I get everything I wanted. It was so slick. It was so slick. So I want to put something in the show notes where people can go to understand the relationship between Alexa and some of the most popular Alexa hacks and maybe if this, then that is, is have you got something for me? Where should we go for that? Uh, so what I'm, I'm going to have to actually, I, I need to have a blog post on this. It, it's funny. Data automation has been kind of in the weeds doing development on all of this stuff. And we've just really started playing this like podcasting game and we've got our own show that we're starting automate, delegate, eliminate. Um, it, it's going to be pretty fun, but so I don't have a blog post yet, but I'll, I'll put together a couple of links for you and we'll put it in the show notes. And I've just found one. Uh, it's on ifttt.com slash Amazon underscore Alexa. And it talks about, uh, it just gives example after example after example of ways that you can integrate those two technologies to well, make life easier. It and go look, when you're looking inside Alexa, there's a, there's a section of the Alexa app. If you open up Alexa, go look for the routines. It's a new, it's a new section of the Alexa app. It's called routines. Uh, it's, it's right in between skills. I'll open it up to tell you exactly where it is. But, but that, that section, Alexa is putting in new stuff. Uh, the Amazon team's putting in new stuff inside that part of the app all the time. So um, we've got all sorts of stuff in here. Yeah, routines is what it's called. And they do, I mean, you can set it up. Like I have this thing on Alexa where um, 
we're, we're, we're members of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints, and we do this thing every night at home called Come Follow Me, where we, we give a lesson inside our home. Yeah. I, um, it's really powerful. It helps a lot with our family. I have it set up so that at uh, 6.30 every day, every weekday, it, it comes on and says, Alexa actually announces to the whole household, it's time for Come Follow Me. And then it plays a hymn to remind us all to go do that okay. every single day. So, I mean, we got all sorts of, like, we've been kind of in the dumps right now about all of the things that are going on in the world. It's been really, really hard. Yeah, and so yeah. one of the things that I challenged the household to do was to write down things that make them grateful. And so we created a gratitude list. You may not know this. Alexa can actually do any list you want. You can say, Alexa, make me a gratitude list. And it will create a gratitude list. And then you say, add groceries to my gratitude list, add sunshine to my gratitude list, add. And so we have a list going. I think we're up to 120 things that we've, we've added to this list in a week and it totally calls you out. So if you try to add sunshine twice, it's like you already have sunshine added to your list. Do you want to add it again? And you're like, dang it, I have to find something else. And so we've challenged ourselves to find a hundred unique things every single week ongoing. It's going to get a lot harder here soon because we've already got 120 things on the list. But, but that's, that's another one that I love. We actually have a slightly a, a more manual take on the gratitude exercise every night at dinner. We all, my daughter, my wife, and I, we all say, and she's not even six years old yet, and we all say what we're grateful for. That there you go. Yeah, yeah. I have a, I have an app that reminds me on my phone to actually write an entry in my gratitude journal, which is a there you Google go. app, which is also on my phone every single yep. day. Yep. Yep. And so, so that gratitude take, we we write that down, and I actually took it a step further, and we printed them out. And, and like, I have little pictures all over my house I, and I wanted my three-year-old to be able to read what was on there, but she can't read. Yeah. So I actually, I hacked, if you want this, I'll, I'll send you the code later. Um, I hacked Google so that you could, or not Google, I hacked, um, a couple of these free image sites so that I could put in a keyword into the document. So like sunshine, and it would automatically find the first free picture of sunshine that it could find so that I didn't have to go do a Google image search for all 120 things. So like I, 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 I there was one week and I was like, oh, I want images. And I was like, screw it. I'm just going to write myself something in Google app script. And so I made, <laughs> I made it so that I can have a formula that says bring back image URL of this. And then I imported the image into the cell. I, I just do stupid stuff, man. It's hey, everybody's got their hobby. All right. Well, we are going to uh, put an end to our nerdness at this point. In <laughs> yeah. Uh, if you've made it this fun. far, if you've made it this far, congratulations. You can consider yourself a nerd too. Hence my sword in the background. Yes, Sorry, there there, there will audio. be all sorts of links in the show notes, folks. I don't know, even know the episode number of this yet, but I'll have said it at the beginning when I, by the time I do post-production. And I uh, come to the show notes and you'll find the links to things we've been talking about, things that I've been Google while, Googling while Will and I have been talking. For example, I found on Smarter Home Guide, uh, there's this list of best Alexa routines for 2020. So I'll be geeking out go. on that later. And Will, I'm sure you're going to send me some good stuff. Will, if people want to get in touch with you, um, we'll put your LinkedIn URL uh, or to, to your profile rather in the show notes to so make sure you get that over to me as well. And I want to thank you very much for making some time to come and be on the show and geek out with me on uh, how to automate your business and your life. Yep, absolutely.